What's up? What's up? There we go, guys. We're getting started. We're trying to get Max on. We're almost ready to go. What's happening, guys? It is Barracuda. It's been a couple of weeks. Welcome to Jake Squad, whether you're live in chat or you'll be watching on replay. Kind of excited for tonight because Mr. Max Brancic is going to be joining us. And um, Max is an awesome dude. So he, uh, he definitely knows how to how to make a jig. And we're going to be talking about some of the finer things tonight. So Max and I were actually in the room a few minutes ago. And then we had to get a couple of things squared away. And um, he's restarting his laptop. And if not, it'll come in on his cell phone. So it was working fine. And like all things technology, sometimes it just goes south. So how's everyone been? It's been well. Trippy, I see you. Chris Hill, Lime Green. What's happening, guys? Michael Bradley, how are you, buddy? Everyone will start jumping in the room. So, um, yeah, and when Max comes back, he's going to restart his laptop. And then if not, he's going to jump in with a cell phone. So, you know, what have I been up to? I don't know, man. I have been uh, – I, I, what does Live Green say? Are we blessed with the Epic one tonight? Uh, no, I don't know where Epic's at. <laughs> I have no idea. David, welcome. What's up, buddy? Um, what have I been up to? I was making a lot of jigs. I just got back um, last week from Mille Lacs. And, um, you know, was it glorious? No, it was not glorious. So, hold on. I'm going to see if uh, I'm going to see if Max is on. Ma well, I'm going to add Max and see what happens here. Can you hear me? Oh, dude. Now you're we in. There we go. Now we're golden. So, here, here you guys go. I, Max, I was just telling him that uh, – you're a jig making fiend. And so well, just to get started, dude, why don't you tell everyone about you a little bit so they kind of get a feel for, you know, what uh who you are, where you fish, and a little bit about your background, Bob. Yeah, definitely. So uh, I grew up here here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Um, been fishing the bay since I've been really little. Um graduated high school and uh kind of didn't know what I wanted to do. So I started guiding. Um for Brett Alexander on the ice. And, um, and then I was getting into nursing school. So got through nursing school was guiding part-time. And okay. then when I got done with nursing school, I, uh, guided full-time for a full year, had an awesome time, met a ton of people. That's when I really got started into making my own tackle, um, guiding business. It's, you got to save yeah. money where you can. So <laughs> that's right. <dude. laughs> Go through a lot of tackle, that? especially on the Great Lakes here. Um, and Brent Alexander, I mean, how many how how many guides do you think? I mean, Brent's a well known name up north, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, how many guides do you think are kind of working with him as like a, like an available guide? If they, somebody contacts Brent Alexander, there's how many how many guys kind of fit in that stable? That well, are right now, I think guys? he's got three or four full-time guys. I think three for sure, and then um, a bunch of guys that kind of do it part time. So okay. he's got a lot of, a lot of opportunity for bookings. And I imagine certain times of the year, obviously, you know, uh, sp a spring and then of course fall, mm -hmm. probably spring more than any other time. It's probably the busiest, right? Yeah. They, he books a lot of musky stuff too. So that fall time is very busy also. Um, he's pretty much yeah. through the full year is pretty much booked, but yeah, I didn't think about that. You see a musky on the great lakes and there are some, there's some gig ginormous muskies. Yeah, it's unreal. <laughs> we got some absolute freaks here. But all right, so let me ask you a question. So mm -hmm. you started guiding for them. Would you say that that was predominantly uh, bass, or do you were you guiding walleye? What what type of guiding stuff were so you? So I did it all. I did the musky, walleye, and bass. But I definitely leaned more towards the bass, and he would push the bass trips my way, and he would do more of the walleye stuff. So that worked. Out I got you. Mm -hmm. because the funny part is like hey, guys i'll pop it up right now so and the links are the links are down below in the description too so max max posts more pictures over the years of walleye than he does a bass i'm just calling yeah. him out on that just, no definitely just for yeah. the record yeah and, and, and honestly it's probably because some of those walleye are pretty darn impressive and i don't know how many are clicking past the 30 30 inch mark but yeah, there no, are some we're fortunate it's it's tough like when we're, it's early spring and the our for some reason, I haven't figured out our bass like early, right? When that ice comes off, I haven't been able to dial them in. Like I'll catch them, but I haven't yeah. been able to dial it in. And, and our walleye fishing is just incredible that time of year, right? When the ice comes yeah. off. So it's tough not to when we have an opportunity at a 30 every time you go out. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's, is that, that's the number for walleye, right? So that's, like, I yeah. don't get me wrong. I'm a walleye guy. If I'm catching walleye, that's mm -hmm. what I tell people, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. in terms of, 
target him. You know, it's funny. I'll tell you a story. So when we were up at Mille Lacs, one of our buddies who um, who lives uh, up in Wisconsin, he, he was up there with us. And I got in his boat one day. The first day we're up there, and I got in his boat, and we kind of got off the water early, I don't know, later afternoon. It, it, so we got off, and he has two rods in his boat or in the car. And they were rigged up with like crawler harnesses and stuff. I go, dude, what, what are you doing? Yeah. I said, what is this? And I, I kind of laughed because I know he's a walleye guy too, you know. And um, but yeah, it's just you, a lot of guys when you're fishing for bass, you're gonna catch walleye and stuff. And so mm-hmm. we seem to get a lot of northern guys on this show. Why? I don't know. It's just because that's my my bread and butter. I promised yeah. Max. They told the southern guys. They said. One of these times, I'm going to start popping and getting some of the southern guys on and um, <laughs> and talking about some other other types of things. Yeah. But the thing is, it's funny. You and I were talking, and there's a lot of, you know, from show to show, there's a lot of different people that design a lot of different types of jigs. But one of the things you and I was, you know, you're not um, you're not out. You don't spend your days building skirted jigs all the time, right? No. That's no, not your jam. It's definitely not my thing. Like I'll do it, but and like I like to do it, but it's definitely not what I super interested in. Like I want to make the best hair jig for a smallmouth out there and the best tube hooks and the best Ned rig hooks, best swim bait hooks. But the skirted jig I, I definitely play along with. Like I, I got I got a bunch that I made, but it's definitely not my bread and butter. So Okay. So let, let let's so I, I know we're gonna talk hair jigs tonight. Mm-hmm. Like there's always hair jigs talked about on this show, right? For a couple different reasons. But like here, I want to show you something, but I'm going to laugh and I don't mind showing all these. So look at, you guys see this box I got right here? This is, this became one of my like travel boxes that I made. And funny enough, all I have in here are green pumpkin, green pumpkin, chartreuse, and in white uh, ball heads with, I. what do I have in here? Maybe a one on I don't know if I put one out or two out hooks in here yep. with a wire keeper. And I'm like, I'm more excited about this box than like well, anything you else. It. You can throw anything on them. You can throw I anything know. on them. You don't need fancy colors. So. Yeah. And I, I, it's, I just go, I go, you know, I just wanted to do something a little bit different. And I'm most excited about this box because I could throw swim baits on here. Mm-hmm. I could throw, like, I, I, I still like to throw grubs a lot um, mm-hmm. on the rivers, like when I'm wading the rivers and stuff. And this is kind of my, like do all box. Like I, I could take this box and I could fish anywhere in the country, freshwater or salt. And I would, I would want to upsize the hooks a little bit probably, but I was laughing because when you and I were talking, I go, those are the types of boxes that excite me lately. You know, definitely. No. And like my, even like, this is my one terminal tackle box. Like this is all my jig heads. This is what I keep in the boat. Like this is what I run. Hold on. I want to, let me, I always, I was always say, mm-hmm. make, let me make you big. So let's right, so hold that up. This is what I run for my terminal tackle pretty much my jig heads. So I got okay. all, all my, um, Ned rigs here. I got 20th and then you run down and then I got some swim bait hooks, like big bullet heads. And then uh, all my screw locks. Um, that's pretty you much. You do like the screw team. locks over the wire keepers. Yeah. Yes? It's, it's a no brainer for me. Is it like, okay. So I run pretty much straight Kai tech and, um, for my swim bait and then i'll run like spark shad and stuff too but that screw lock that is just it's just i it's tough to beat i save so much soft plastics using that yeah because um, it is gonna rip dude i mean let's yeah. be honest with the wire keeper it is it is gonna rip and um i'll be honest with you the one of the reasons is uh if like if i'm traveling light and stuff like that or if i want to switch stuff out I have this horrible habit that I won't just cut something off, yeah. right? And I won't cut it off. Like I have to take the plastic off the jig okay. and then switch jigs. And there are certain plastics that you can do that with. Otherwise, you're going to be no. wasting a lot of money. No. And yeah. But the thing is, when I'm walking around in a river, like I have a side compartment of like, you know, like I'll have a little pouch and it's got like, um, I, I'll have jigs with plastics in it. And then what happens is I wind up with the whole, a whole pack of, jigs and plastics that don't wind up going out on the next trip whereas if i was in a boat i know that i could reach down and grab that again and tie it on definitely Um, and i i kind of got away from doing a lot of waiting which i kind of want to get back into i do like waiting the rivers around here um but yeah on the boat i have one whole side of my side deck that i just keep all my plastics and i bet you right now i bet you if you go out there i have 25 swim baits rigged up 
just yeah, different it, sizes and colors and I mean that's freaking great. So like okay, so let's go over this one more time. Mm-hmm. So you got the screw heads. Yep. You'll have neds. Neds. And then okay. some footballs. So I run a lot of swim baits on football heads. Oh, here, because there's, I mean, they're, it's just brutal. And then, um, I have a couple freestyles for like moping and stuff. And then if it, they get really picky and I want like a bigger eye or something, I'll throw a swim bait on them too. What do you like to use if you're, if you're hanging a minnow? You I like moping. You brought it up. So now yeah, I want to know. Oh boy. Okay. Um, <laughs> I mean, I just use like, I, I, that's the one jig head I'm pretty particular on like my color and stuff. So I don't know how easy it is to oh, see. Oh, see, that's my that's my love right there, dude. Yeah. So like, I got some red on the bottom for the gills, and some glitter, and some darker on the top. Um, so not freestyle, and then I run a lot of different baits. I I do like the um, whatever the small jerk minnow is in the uh, in the max scent. I can't remember what they call that, like flat nose minnow. I think they call it. Um, yeah. Okay. I like that, or like a baby Z two, and I pre- keep it really simple, and that's about it. Hmm. And tell me what, t- how deep of water are you usually? What, what, how deep of water we usually start hanging a minnow? The shallowest on the Great Lakes. The shallowest I'll do it is thirty five. Otherwise, really? so yeah. true. You're you're true. You're you're mm-hmm. moving. Yeah. That's- if if you're under thirty five on green bay the chances you're gonna get them to bite they're so smart so, so. you're talking this is out on the reefs and mm-hmm. without throwing all the names out there anyone that knows yeah. the reefs knows the names right yeah. so um see it's crazy you say that because like um so i was remember i told you i was with jim jim de rosa up on Malax, yeah. right so i'm with de rosa and he was talking about it and maybe we were in 20 to 23 feet of water Mm -hmm. and he was talking about it and i to me because i don't get a chance to do it as much i was thinking i'm like well that's for there too Mm -hmm. there's also not as much deeper water on Mille Lacs compared to like the bay of green but um it's just interesting watching those different techniques because technically I mean, I guess a lot of people do a lot of different ways or they call what they're called hanging a minnow they'll throw it out and then they'll just let it pendulum back to them a little bit. But mm-hmm. you're talking a lot of true vertical. Yeah, using your graph and straight fishing up for individual fish. Um, but And then, like, I go on the inland lakes in northern Wisconsin, and I've caught them in 15 doing it okay. when you got a so, little bit dirtier water. And Okay, so same concept, but you're really trying to maintain the verticality of, definitely. of the Definitely, yeah. And, you, and the big thing on Green Bay is they're so pressured that, like, if you drop it below them, you'll actually scare them. Like that's why I'm looking forward to get live so I can really see that. Um, but like, you'll actually scare them. Like if you drop it below them, like you'll watch them on 2d and they're just gone. So very, very interesting. And you tell me now, tell me why you like that freestyle head the most. And it's not just the color. No, it's, I, I love the way it sets up. It's gotta be the 90 degree tie for that technique. Um, and then the big eye, that big eye is really a big key for me. I really like something when it's just sitting in front of their face like that to have something yeah. they can visually see. You know, it's interesting that you bring up the freestyle. Head, Cause I, I mean, everyone knows that I love the freestyle, mm-hmm. head, but I mean, it's, I, I won't use it all the time and I'll explain why, but the, the thing about that, um, that freestyle had small jaw when he was on, I don't know if you've ever seen him, any of his yeah. tying videos, mm-hmm. but I had him on, a month or two back or whatever it was, he talked about the weight distribution of just how it lays out in that head. And there is a big difference, guys. Like, as an example, like, if you talk about, I can't even find a, let's see. Like, if you talk about the weight distribution on a head, like, this would be an example. Here's some, here's some uh, three odd, I think they're three odd owner, 5318s, right? And mm-hmm. if you, it, just plain, right? And yep. if you on different jigs are going to have a different placement and the lead will be a little bit more forward um, than others. And of course you have to, you have to account for the fact of, um, you know, how much lead is on the shank then. But the reality is it's going to cause a different um, profile and presentation depending on what your technique is. And, Definitely. and small job talked about like that weight distribution on the freestyle. He just feels is absolutely perfect. And part of it is because you don't have any, um, or the action he likes is because you don't have any weight on the shank. Definitely. Yeah. All the weight all is forward. in the head. Mm-hmm. So that would be the difference between a freestyle head 
and then um, uh, a freestyle head, and then one that would be some type of whether it be the lead barb or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. It's just all the weight is in the head as opposed to on the shank too. It's going to change the way it falls. All right, Anthony, what hook is that on that freestyle? What 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 hook do you like to use, Max? Um, I like the six oh four in that one. The Gamma got to six oh four. So you don't need a really big hook gap, in my opinion, on that style because the baits I'm using are super small. Like like you're not using a big, thick like like a Kitek fat or something like that. Where right. like the Kitek fat, I would not use the six oh four in for the most part because that hook gap on that six oh four is pretty small. Um, yeah, it 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 is in the in the funny there's a lot of funny things about the 604 right mm -hmm. so and i i repeat myself sometimes guys because i don't know if you guys have been on and seen other shows and stuff but like like i've told people that got me 604 i i put four odd got me 604s and quarter ounce and even eighth ounce heads mm -hmm. and fish them for uh snook and tarpon down in florida mm -hmm. right and i i and i caught those fish i mean small tarpon Oh. Uh, snook mangrove snappers all that type of stuff but the thing is G gamagatsu bills the 604 is a heavy wire hook and i don't it's not heavy wire no to it's me. not no. it's actually it, it it just i don't know why it's just it's not heavy wire it's not as heavy as like uh like the 111 like the one gamagatsu 111 yep. plus it's a different bend you know yeah definitely the, the 111's a o'shaughnessy bend and the 604 is a regular round bend but the deal is i I, like, I'll give you an example, and I, some people will disagree with me on this. And I, I don't, I it, that's fine because I don't fish as much as I like northern waters and stuff. I don't fish there exclusively for with hair jigs. Mm -hmm. But I made my, um, I made my hair jigs this season with six oh fours. Okay. Um, and why? I don't know. People said I should go a little thinner wire. I, I still kind of no. feel that six oh four is a thin wire, right? Yeah. No. I, so the. I made half mine with the owner 604 or the Gami 604. Wow, I can't even talk. Um, yeah, the 604, and then I made my other ones with the 5313, the owner, and uh, that's even heavier wire hook. Is that owner 5313? It and, is. Um, that's what I use, and I I don't lose one on a hair jig. Like if I hook one with a hair jig, it's coming in the boat. So. <laughs> So um, listen, I want to say one thing before we go mm -hmm. on. So my boy, I, and I don't get to see, he's been on before, but and James Trevino, I see you jumped in too, brother. So Jig Addict's in. Jig Addict, he's been on before, but this is my guy from out on the West Coast, and he makes he makes some some hot killer bucktails on the Ultramental Jig Head. Mm -hmm. And if you guys haven't seen uh, Jig Addict on Instagram, you should look him up. Um, I've posted his stuff before. But I just I kind of I kind of love his stuff. So a little West Coast love to my boy Jig Addict. He's part of the, he hit him him and his group of friends started their own little group called the H two O Hooligans. And I just you know I I like I like names like I think yeah. it's j jazzy right. Yeah, and so a lot of respect to my boy Jig Jig Addict in the house. But but anyway, Max, go ahead, continue, brother. Yeah. So I don't think that six oh four is too heavy at all. Like. Yeah. That five three one three, I hook them and like they don't come off either, and that's even heavier. So like, See, if, do ahead. you think? Let, let, let me ask you this, Max. Is mm -hmm. you're saying this? Um, mm -hmm. Well, hold on. Go. I'll I'll add to it. Go ahead. Keep talking about the fifty three thirteen. The owner so, yeah, owner so, fifty three thirteen. Yeah. So I switch that. Like, I'm gonna be honest. I throw all my Ned rigs and all my tubes, all my swim baits, is gonna be switching over to that five three one three. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. For the most part. And I keep some stuff with that 604. And then I also throw the owner 5318. 18. Yeah. yeah. All right. So let's talk. Come on. Like, see, this is why I love it. So, I, all right. So I, this is my own personal rub. And I think mm -hmm. I'm doing it in reverse though. Mm -hmm. So when I first started making hair jigs, right. And like, I, I'm, I'm new, I'm newer at all this. Mm -hmm. uh, but my first, when I first started making hair jigs, I was using the 5318. Okay. And then I've switched over to the 604 to try. And I actually, um, I might even play around with the vic some of the victories. But here, mm -hmm. listen, here's the rub. And my, my the reasoning is completely wrong, but I'm going to say what it is. Just in case, so everyone thinks like, oh, you make cool stuff sometimes. Yes, but I think illogically sometimes too. <laughs> so the 5313, some, there, there are people that will tell you that the 5313 and 5318 owner hook 
are the same hook. And it's basically those two hooks are the ones that are built in the do it molds. Ned molds is the sufficient hook to use in the Midwest finesse mm -hmm. mold. Right. So if to give you a general idea what those, those owner, uh, uh, hooks are generally billed as as part of Ned rigs. Mm -hmm. they're, they're very common in Ned rigs and people love them. The 5313 has a slight bend in the bar. Yeah, hold on, Max. Let me make you big. It has a slight bend down in the bar. Do you have a... I, I have a 5318 in front of me. Yeah, I got one three, right here. Three All right, hold yeah. on. So I got... This is actually a 5 odd, so it's a little... All right, go here, ahead. But, so but that does you, not have that bend in it. It does not have that bend, mm -hmm. but I like that bend. You like the bend, and I, I like this is why bend. I'm saying I think my logic is my. I, I think my actions are flawed because logically, that freaking bend, guys, it is the same exact concept is fit and function of what you get out of a circle hook. Everyone, mm -hmm. all right. So um, um, just hear hear what you've ever heard about cir circle hooks, and if you haven't, we're gonna educate you a little bit here. The function of that is that it's going when when you go to set the hook, it's going to it's going to turn, and just by having that tip a little bit, it's naturally going to cause as soon as it catches on to any part of the inside of a fish's mouth, that hook is going to start to turn, mm -hmm. just because of that bend. It's naturally going to be in that that targeted air or, or, or the range of it and motion of it is naturally going to be drawn to do that. Now, keep in mind, guys, this isn't a circle hook where it's as I'm describing it, but I'm saying that the start of the process of that hook set is the same exact thing. It's going to start with it. That that little that little piece is going to start to start to hook the fish and it's going to cause the natural direction of that 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 hook set. Now, mm -hmm. I'm not saying guys, somebody could come and tell me, Murph, you're full of shit. And maybe I am, but I will tell you this. I almost I don't like the 5313s even though logically it makes sense to me, it's because I just don't like the way it looks. And so I use the 5318. <laughs> okay. So if you ever wanted to wor wonder about my stupid, stupid practicality and how I think about it, but you are, I, I don't know. Let's see what anyone says. Ball in 21, geek it out and jig making. Yes. Well, listen, let me tell you something. I'm far from the jig master here. Will says, he goes, Teach me, yeah. You you need help with your jig game. Well, here's the deal, brother. We all need help with our jig game. We <laughs> we all have to learn. And you know how, Max? How about it? How much of it is uh like confidence too, right? Like, I would say seventy five percent confidence. Like I throw that five three one three now, and I have confidence if I get a bite. And like it, it's there's different times too. Like I'll fish a hair jig different. Like I'm not gonna lie, I don't always swim it. Um. If I get a bite when I'm not swimming it, I won't always get it in the boat. But if I swim a hair jig and I hook it with the 5313, it's coming in the boat. Like 99.9% .9 of the time, it is hooked in the top. Just like we, a good friend of mine calls it the hairy hole because he, the, hairy it, hole. the hairy hole it hooks him there every time. Every time. See, and it, it, it becomes hard for a guy like me not to listen to what you're saying and, and, and because you guys do it more often, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, um, so Dark Man says, um, let's see, oh, uh, what if ever Mustad hooks do you use? Yeah. So, I mean, I think Mustad makes a lot of good hooks, you know? Yeah. No, they, um, so I don't know if I have any up here, but so what I actually use, what I used to use for my tubes, and I'm not getting rid of it. I definitely, I, I use a lot of their, it's like their two, three, two, seven, six, eight BLN or whatever, just their regular 90, but it's yeah. two X heavy. So it's like their steelhead version. Yeah. And I use that for my tubes because I don't use a light hook for my tubes at all. I use a heavy hook and like, I like to hit them. Like when you, like, I don't mess around. Like, it's not like my other stuff. Um, That's a good comment because Max there um, and dark man, there's another one too. So um, five, two, eight. Uh, I don't know if it's five two eight, but it's three three. Mm -hmm. The one that ends in three three is another ninety with okay. a two x two x uh, strength hook that is just a beast. Mm -hmm. And um, guys, here's the deal: I I don't think there's a harder hook set in the game for what I do, other than the, like a tube. Like mm -hmm. I I freaking crank them. Yeah, but you, you have to. You you it just it's just the way it's just the way it is. You've got all this. 
you've got all the space between uh, the shank of the hook and the mm -hmm. plastic. It's just the way it all lines up. You know, funny enough, Max, here, I'll show you. Let's see if it's in this box. So I purposely made um, with Gami, Gami 604s, I purposely made, and I know you like to make them even smaller, but I mm -hmm. I made, I had some smaller already, so I didn't make them, but I made three-eighths, quarter, and three-sixteenths, two-aught Gami 604s mm -hmm. uh, for tubes. And I purpose, and I'll tell you why I have these heavier weights is because when I'm fishing a tube, I almost always fish a heavier weight. Okay. And I'll tell you why. Like, if anyone's asking in chat, like, if you're not a tube fisherman, a lot of people will fish lighter weights for tubes, but I'm not one of them because I'll throw other baits. And mm -hmm. I'll let me explain why. Because on the south end of Lake Michigan, not not up north, not mm -hmm. when we say up north, if you live in, if you're a Midwesterner and you say up north, you're talking uh, Minnesota <laughs> or <laughs> Or on the peninsula on the Bay of Green, right? Mm -hmm. or, or in Wisconsin. So I I I use those heavier weights because I when I was taught to fish smallmouth on the Great Lakes, we were fishing chunk rock and rebar on break walls, and I didn't want anything falling slow. I mm -hmm. wanted I wanted it to fall as fast as humanly possible, right? Yep. And and that's kind of what I was taught. And so, like, I still, to this day, fish a tube that way. And, and a lot of times where the ways people will fish a tube, um, uh, uh, now, now, and especially a lot of guys up Max's way that are more regulars and even friends of mine, they're like, dude, I, I, I rarely go above a quarter. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and I'm thinking, dude, quarter's my limit. Like, I don't like, I go, if it's a quarter and up, I'm I'm throwing it on a bait caster, and if I go below it, then I'll throw it on a um, spinning rod. Talk mm -hmm. to me about that a little bit in terms of how, what type of weights you're using when you throw tubes, because I'm interested to hear this, man. So I would say I throw three sixteenths most of the time would be the one I throw most of the time. Okay. It's kind of a comfortable one. Um, if I want to go lighter, I'll throw an Ed rig. Um, but I am starting to play around. So like the, whatever the tapered two mold, I think the smallest size they make in that is an eighth. I believe it is an eighth. And you want to know why I know that? Because I, um, I took note of a picture you posted on your story mm. when you were restocking the box. And I looked and I remember seeing that you were pouring eighth ounce. Yeah. I, got, I, I don't know where that box is, but yeah, <laughs> I definitely have an eighth. So, oh yeah, here it's right here. So yeah. So this is my two box. I this is all tube jig that. heads. Gosh. So yep. these are, are one aught, and then I make two aught. So this is my side I use. I this does not come out often, but the, um, the two aughts do not come out often. No. All right, hold on. I I have to ask. Mm -hmm. Two and a half inch tube. Are you using a one aught? Yep. So that's that two and three quarter to two and a half inch. I think that's a Howie. Yeah. Right. Um, right. So that's that's the one odd in there, and, and yeah, that's see, the five three one three in there, and it just sits in. I like the profile. So, so. I'm going to tell you something. It's funny you say that because when I threw on a tube last week when we're up in Mille Lacs, um, I all mine are twos. I went down to two odds. Okay, and I have not gone down to one odds, but I like the two odds, and I, they were all two and a half size tubes, mm -hmm. two and a half inch size tubes. I like the two odd. Um, I I don't know why. I I it's just a do. preference thing. I sure yeah. it, it works. I do it when I run out of my one odds when I'm catching well, them. So here's the other thing too, Max. I you keep in mind I'm also a recovering three odd tube tube jig guy. Okay. You know what I mean? So like mm -hmm. I'm coming down from throwing three and a half inch tubes, which yep. I historically always did. On the south end of Lake Michigan, we didn't throw smaller tubes, dude. You don't, we yeah, threw, you don't need to. Yeah. We threw three and a half inch tubes, mm -hmm. but now the trend is everywhere you go, everything's going smaller. And now mm -hmm. my three and a half inch tubes don't even come with. Well, that's not true. I'll always have a bag of green pumpkin and like a smoke purple. Yeah. But, but they, but besides that, I don't need, I don't need three and a half inch tubes to fish anywhere anymore. And I, I, See, guys, listen, anyone in chat, you got to understand. And if you're not, and I know you guys hear, hear us talk about Northern, whether it be East Coast Northern or, uh, you know, we talk a lot of Wisco stuff in Minnesota here. But um, 
you got to understand, like, that's just the things that we throw and the finesse for us. And what we throw is a lot of it's open water, right? So we, we're not fishing structure and to the same extent, but I like when people talk about finesse, like we're true finesse people. Like that's, yeah. that's really how it is. Like people talk about throwing 15 pound line and I almost fall over. Yeah. I thought, <laughs> my God, I don't think I put more than even my friends, even locally around mm-hmm. us. Like when we went, we were going up to Mille Lacs, mm-hmm. my friends like, well, I got 15 pounds. I go 15 pounds. I said, I don't have anything over 12 pound on a bait caster. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you're crazy. You're not. I go, are you out of your mind? I said, I just, you that's don't need how I learned to fish. Yeah. Yeah, I just I, and people could say you're crazy. Well, I also don't have braid on a bait caster either. I just okay. I don't have an opportunity to go out and fish for frogs all the time mm-hmm. with a frog and stuff like that. I just don't. And um, so it's just everything's relative. So but for me coming down from a, a three and a half inch tube, a three odd hook. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we we even for a while were putting four out four out Gamagatsu 604s in our tubes. OK. Right. And that was too big. Yeah. But now that I'm throwing a two and a half, I have to go down. So yep. it's two, it's two out this season. Maybe it'll go down next year. Yeah, I think you should look at that one out. You'll get snagged less too. <laughs> you will get snagged less. I have to that think one about out. That. Because like, I mean, that head, I mean, so that's a three sixteenths. That's a three sixteenths in there. And it just like if you get it two out, it sticks out substantially farther. So like you get snagged less, and I don't know, I just think I get better hookups with this. And for me, it's a good point. with how pressured they are, and when I'm fishing a tube, it's in under 12 feet of water 75% of the time. Um, but okay. I have started to play around with, like, even cutting some of the lead off that one eighth and throwing a 16th. Um, and you're just in shallow water, and I, I really like that smaller hook in there, just a better profile. So, I mean, I, I'll say that, I mean, I, I, I very... I'm already built for the scaling it down more and more. I just, I'm in the process of doing that. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I'm, I'm learning to fish like ball heads. Like there's not, I mean, I, you, you won't catch me. I, so I'll tell, I, Max heard me say this and we'll probably, maybe we'll mention lying a little bit later. So I was fishing with one of our buddies up on Mille Lacs who is a guide up there. And he used to be from the Chicagoland area. He, he actually, ironically enough, he ran a, um, him and another guy ran a, um, a radio show for 30 plus years in the Chicago area, you know, on outdoors and stuff. And so I was up with, with our buddy Jim and he handed me and I, he said, leave some of your stuff in the, at the place at the cabin. You know, I got 30 rods in the boat. Well, he handed me a rod that had a quarter ounce jig head on it with like a paddle tailed swim bait on the back. And I'm, (laughs) I'm like, Holy Christ, I can cast this thing across the lake. Yeah. I, and I was laughing because I had to get used to throwing a quarter ounce size weight. Cause you, you, you won't catch me throwing a quarter ounce jig on a swim bait, like nearly ever. Oh, I'll, I'll throw 16th and eighth ounce, even in a river system with current. Now when Max is fishing and he's fishing deeper water, I don't have that same experience. So like, mm-hmm. talk to me about like your, the range of water depths and what weighted heads you would use for throwing swim baits. So yeah, so I fish a little different than a lot of people around here. So the only time I'm fishing deep water is in the fall. Like that's, and okay. sometimes I'll be shallow in the fall too, but a lot of the time in the summer, you don't need to be deep. Um, so like that fall time I'll switch over and it's different too, because you can fish in the fall. You can fish to the, I guarantee you can catch them on the 4.8, even whatever that 4.8 fat Kitek, you can catch them on it. They'll eat anything you throw down there. You just got to get into their mouth. Um, so mm-hmm. I'll fish a three eighths and a half. I'll even go three quarters sometimes and throw like the 4.3 and the 4.8. Cause um, you're fishing down deep. there fishing 45 to 50. Um, well, probably 35 to 50. Um, and you got to keep it down there. I mean, it's in the fall. It's going to be windy every day you're out there. So yeah, um, you, you just got to keep it down there and I'll fish heavy weights in the fall. Heavy weights in the fall. What's funny yeah. is. Let me see if I got the box here. So I had um some of my friends, they they got me going on, and I don't to be honest with you, I don't use them that much around here, but they got me going on the um the uh the cool baits underspins, mm-hmm. which I think are phenomenal. They've got They're unreal sample yeah. swiv- swivels on them, mm-hmm. they're just great, and just on the bottom, ticking tick mm-hmm. along the rocks. And I, I almost died when they told me to buy half, uh half and three quarter ounce. I'm yeah. like, what? three quarter yeah. rounds. I'm like, where are we fishing? But yeah. 
lo and behold, it's, man, that's you can definitely do it. And like I've started to play around with it too. Like even in that shallow water, throwing like a three ace. Because okay. it, you can really speed it up and just get them to react on it. It's like a finesse reaction bite. Um, you do have to speed it up on a three. Oh yeah, you got to haul this. it. Yeah. Like you're yeah. cranking on it, so you're not dragging on the bottom. Like, but I, it makes sense. I mean, you know, if you're looking to speed up the retrieve, you're looking to get it down right away. I mean, that that's the application of it. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, there's so much you can do. But for the most part, if I'm swim bait fishing, it's going to be an eighth or a sixteenth. Or yeah, three okay. sixteenth, but most and of the time an eighth. Up to what? So, up to how many feet of water? I mean, I've thrown an eighth up into twenty feet, but that's that's about the max. Mostly like fifteen feet, I would say. All right. What about all right? So Matt, South Jersey fisherman, he says, "Is have you ever used the hover strolling technique mm. for smallmouth?" <laughs> First of all, can can somebody please explain to me exactly what hover scrolling is technically? I generally know think I know what it is, but so, I'm just curious. So you actually take like a jig hook, yeah, and you put it into a plastic. Um, here, let me grab a plastic quick. See, man, I got you, buddy. Max is. Max is gonna Max is gonna pull me out, and I'm gonna learn a little something here sometimes too, because I've heard people use this term, and I just I've never I've never take, take your plastic. Anything. I mean, you can use any kind of small plastic like this. This isn't this isn't a plastic I would use, but so you actually start it back a little bit, okay, and then you rig it. So it's just a jig hook. I mean, you're literally using a jig hook. Um, See, I love this. I would never throw this. But now now that I'm, I'm listening, I'm paying attention. So that's how you rig it. And then you would put a nail weight you. in the head, like like only like a little small nail weight. Um, I got you. So I don't like to talk about it, but yes, I have, I have used that. And it's deadly. I haven't well, done it a ton where I like I have it dialed in, but it, it is – good so stuff. matt saying gamma got to makes a hover strolling now called the horizon head mm -hmm. yeah they make it nice interesting but what we you can do is you can go buy jig hooks for cheap i mean you can buy the five three one threes or the 604 make is works really well for the hover strolling too because you are using such a small plastic and just tie a keeper on there and then so like if you use a regular jig hook like this that's going to slide down so if you tie a keeper on there, which is similar to that one you were talking about, that Gamagatsu one, you you can buy them for a lot cheaper than getting those. You know what? Funny enough, look at so jig. There's that. There's my H two O hooligan jig addict. He's like, yeah. He goes, we we do that for song. And it's crazy you say that because I've actually watched people rig like that on the East Coast for stripers, and and I've seen that technique. Listen, I I, I think that's. That's great. And that's why that's why when guys like Jig Addict come on and stuff like we, we might be talking finesse stuff sometimes, but guys like Jig Addict or Larry Hadley, the angler, when these guys come in, there's a lot of stuff that they do that um that carry over in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. Um to Yeah, what there's so much carryover from salt water and stuff too. So it's it's awesome to integrate it into what we have. And you know what? I'm, and, I, and I don't mind saying this, right? Like so, mm -hmm. so sometimes sometimes people will I, like there's some humility in the experience of of being a jig maker right mm -hmm. and so there's things that i'm i'm really good at and there's plenty that i don't know mm -hmm. um and so like when people bring these things up like i think it's cool to talk about like somebody will ask like murph what about this i'm like if i if i don't feel informed about it i'm not going to tell anyone i'm no, gonna say definitely, I, I don't yeah. know you you want to know about you know how long to bake your jig for and and temperature and, and some other yeah. materials and stuff you want to talk about here? Look at Max. I got to do this now. Oh, absolutely. By the way, you guys send me your address because I got a set coming for you guys. Oh, listen. So the next set, I just got to tell you, you got to find me on Instagram and sticker pack number two is here and it's two pack, two stickers in a pack. It's eight bucks. And you can either, you could pay, you could pay me on it's eight bucks to your door. Uh, it helps support the show. If you don't buy stickers, I really don't care. You don't get any cool stickers then. That's how it goes. No, look, definitely. Look, I'm gonna have to get some of them. Look, no, awesome. no, I'm sending you somebody. Yeah. Look at this one. So this That's is awesome. this, this is sticker pack number two. There's one. Yep. 
And then hold on, here's the other one. This is the one that, that I'm most excited about. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get me some of them. So guys, this is sticker pack number two. Uh, if it message me on Instagram, I'll make sure I tell you exactly what to do. But it, I'm just gonna say it now, just in case anyone heard what I said. I it's on on uh on uh Venmo. You can Venmo me. I don't have PayPal, I don't do PayPal. I have Venmo, it's at Jig Squad. Um, and then I have Zell and, and Zell it's Jig Squad Fishing. Um, here's the deal. If you do order a sticker pack, you got to put sticker pack number two and you got to put your name and address. Otherwise I can't send it to you. And if you're not, I prefer to, if you're on Instagram to send me a message and then, um, and then that way I make sure I know who it is when I get the payment. Cause I don't want somebody to go and pay and not give me their address or something else. And then they don't have a right. If you live in Canada, you're, you're out of luck. You got to message me. I'll charge a buck more. It's nine bucks because it's more shipping. But the problem is you don't you don't have Venmo and you can't use Zelle in Canada. So I gotta find another way to make the Canadians happy, which I love you all. But um, and if anyone asks, like, why am I selling them for eight bucks? Because that's my way of you know making a few bucks to buy a new light and so I can get out of my my wife and I's bedroom and get down <laughs> in the basement with some other lights and another microphone. <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, guys, that's what I do. That's sticker pack number two. There is sticker pack number one. That's one of them from sticker pack number one. It says Jig Squad, set the hook. And then there's another one. So if you want sticker pack number one and you haven't gotten it, then you know, send me a message too. I can get those to you. But uh, and, and if all else fails and you don't have social media and you're or you're not on Instagram, rather, you can email me at jigsquadfishing at gmail.com and uh, I'll always work something out with you. So that's a side note. There's my big sale and hustle, guys. That's all I got. I'm just a I'm just a Midwestern boy trying to sell some stickers that are all my own designs, by the way. I make these myself. So no, you're doing good. They look awesome. I'm not printing them. I just design them all myself. Huh. So, but that's what I do. All right. So on the fly tackle. Hi, boys. Late arrival today. What's up, my man? We're talking hook sizes. I can't. Ben and Brian, whoever's man in the Ford on that one today, they're up your way too. Man. Yeah, they make some awesome stuff. No, I'm really impressed by their stuff. They make some really good stuff. So they a lot make of guys some... around here use it. So yeah, and you know, like I, I even like more when I see their stuff popping up on the on the boys when they're down in Florida and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and, and no, all the good stuff coming. <laughs> no, definitely, right. they make some awesome stuff. So all right, so Max, let me ask you something. Mm -hmm. I I grabbed some of these. Hold on, I want to see if you guys could see. Basically, have you guys seen these? Mm -hmm. Picasso, Picasso makes these things. They're basically, I don't know what size, a small little willow blade on like, it actually looks like, I don't know what type of swivel they're using, but it's a small willow blade on a split ring that's connected to a, a ball bearing swivel that is on one of those arms that used to look like the, um, the jig arms that you would put a rattle on, on mm -hmm, the back yeah. end of a jig. So the latest and greatest is everyone's sliding these on a jig. So basically you can interchange things where if you're, you're using a, a Ned, a Ned jig head or, um, or a ball head or whatever you're using. You can kind of make your own underspin. Mm -hmm. I bought some of them. I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't pull them out of the pack when I was on my last fishing trip. Why? Mm -hmm. I don't have time for that stuff. Like I, I have the things I know that work. I already have underspins made. I didn't yeah, pull them out. Definitely. Have you used it at all? So I played like around with them, but if I go on a river or something, I'll use I'll use something like that. I've used them before, or I'll just use a regular underspin. Um, right. But like, if I'm on the bay, like they're too picky, they'll eat it, but you're not going to catch the giants on it. In my so opinion. You, so you don't think that those underspins are like the hot ticket in any capacity? If you're on a river or dirty water, like we'll get some dirty water when we get some wind in here and you'll like, if you get some really dirty water in the spring, like the rest of the year, you won't. Um, okay in the spring, if we get some dirty water, like definitely stuff like that would work. Um, because you can really play around with it. You can throw it on a net head, but the problem is it's so clear here that something like that will not, in my opinion, it is work. super clear. Yeah. It's, it's so clear that, but like on the rivers around here, that would work really, really well. Interesting. Interesting. I throw right. a lot of underspins on the rivers. So. All right. So what, tell me, tell me about, tell me your opinions of the, um, of the uh what is it the the 
uh, Yokoshira screw heads and all that type of stuff. You saw me make those pictures of those spinners. What do you yeah. think? I think there's something really to it. Um, I don't like to talk about it a lot. I know, dude. but um, no, I definitely think you there's see, something to it. You um, see the gold blade ones I made? I haven't seen the gold ones. No. Oh, those That's look good. Yeah. I mean, so listen, I, it's funny. I, I only wanted to bring this up for a second. Mm -hmm. So on the gold ones, the gold, the gold blades are, mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be hard to see. On the gold blades, it's even each side. There mm -hmm. you go. They're evenly rounded. On the um, on the silver on the silver ones, they're the actual blades that come on the um, the Okashiras. Yeah, where okay. one is round and one yeah. is uneven. And people, oh, everyone's nice. asking me where I get them, and I get them from China. That's the truth. Um, here's the thing. I just wanted to say this because I've been getting a lot of messages about this. So mm -hmm. everyone says, Murph, they're like, are you are you putting a wire keeper on there? And so I've done a lot of things. A lot of guys will tie. Mm -hmm. um, they'll, they'll tie a wire keeper on. I personally have not been doing that. And I'll tell you why. Because I've been playing around with different ways to do it. I noticed the gap from the head that would go all the way back. I'm using the yep. earring back on there. And I want to make a point about this because people have been asking. I don't know why I can't get clarity. I think it's because of where I have my other light. Um, I don't know why I can't get this camera to focus. I never can do it. Um, so the reason, the reason I have this design the way I do is because I am trying to get greater distance from the head back to further down on the shank so mm -hmm. I can use smaller baits that are going to give me more body profile hanging off the back end on a jig like that. Okay. Okay. So um, some people said, I want that to be as close to the head as I can. Okay. Well then you can't use, you can't use little, little hollow, hollow beads like I did. Mm -hmm. You have to use cup washers, yep. but I designed this specifically to get more distance away from the head. Okay. And I will say this, I purposely played around with this because there's two things that can happen here. One I could put a piece of plastic on the back end and that earring backing, it's slight, it's slightly, it's slightly pointed. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it'll slide over the top. And once it hits that lip, if you pull it over it, it'll also act to hold it a little bit. Okay. But let me see if I can find one. There's one other thing that I did. I'm, I just want to show people because I want, I want to see. You also could take, hold on, where's it at? Let me see if it's one of these. I just want to show so people could see. Oh my gosh, where'd it go? Um, you also could take yeah, here's one. So I basically took and I stuck in the bag. Now you see this one? See, I got oh, a wire you keeper. Stuck on it, it in there. Yeah. Yes. So the wire keeper, guys, it's not coming. It's not coming out. Mm -hmm. It's enough to hold it on there for as long as you need it, right? And the earring back isn't coming down easily. But you can once you get it threaded on. To the jig you can actually um stick the you, it's hard to see the wire keeper right now i'm sorry guys yeah, you can see it um, though yeah basically mm -hmm. i'm making the point that you could stick a wire keeper in there and the little hook once it rides over the top of the earring back you can play around with some different things so you don't have to tie something in so if you're not if you're if you're not a tire and you don't have thread and that's not what you want to do you could still make some of these darn things mm -hmm. you could take regular ball head jigs Definitely. And if, yep. And if you ever need to know what the size of the beads are and stuff, you you just gotta let me know, and I, and I'll tell you. I mean, sometimes you gotta work a little extra for it, so you might have to message me. <laughs> but I um I love these things. I've been using these things at the ponds and stuff like that, mm -hmm. and they just um they just slay. I haven't used them for smallmouth as much as I'd like, but I I just I I'm excited to use them more. You have any comments on any of these? So the time when I use them is when I need to keep my bait up in the water column, because having that blade on there does treat, create some drag. Um, yes. And so that's, that's my thought process on it. Um, if I go to You're something right. that's less pressured, maybe I'll be more interested in using them. Um, but I know like up here, there's a lot of guys throwing them now. So huh. like I do, I think they're great. Yes. But I use it more, not, for the blade action, I use it to keep the bait up in the water column um, just so I can slow it down. So I can really slow that bait down. But that's, I haven't played around with them enough to like really tell you exactly what I think. So, all right. So, here I'm going to, I'm going to tell you something. 
and here's what I do know so far, is that differing sized blade sl- allows you to slow things down and is, is able to get that propeller moving at mm-hmm. a slower rate of retrieve. Okay. If I get, um, like I got, like guys, listen, I got the silver, I got the silver bag and I got the gold bag, right? So, so if you've wondered, if in case you've wondered whether I've done my homework, I could tell you I've got every blade size you could possibly imagine, you know, that I I played around with. But what I'll tell you is when you get like the the round rounded bladed side, let's get yep. that right off. If you if you use the regular evenly sized rounded blades or propellers, you um you to get it moving. Funny enough, you have to increase your rate of retrieve. Okay. At least that's what I've experienced by the ones that I've purchased. Right? And that's, I've only, I haven't purchased the ones that are uneven. I just use the Okashira. Um, yeah. I haven't got played around with enough yet, but the ones I bought um, are the rounded ones. And yeah, I was surprised how fast you have to reel them to get it going. I, I, I was even shocked just by um, literally holding them and spinning them. Like I go, yeah. really? No, and, and that's, that's what tipped me off to that. And I didn't realize that. And then of course I go, wow, this is going to be different retrieve rate of speed in the water yeah. and so what did i do right away i went and ordered another hundred of the ones from china <laughs> yeah. no so i definitely I think there's slow. something to that uneven side yeah there is i mean there, there's a reason why they put those in there and mm-hmm. and, and listen when you look at the you'll know, share a screw head or okashira screw head mm-hmm. th- these guys this isn't this high manufactured thing these guys there's there's somebody sitting at a vice using thread and tying definitely. these on no and and it, and it and that's exactly what it is. So, um, all right. So Matt South Jersey Fisherman says, what's Max's thoughts on slow fall jigs or tin head jigs uh, like that zero gravity jig? When is the right time to use something like that? Mm. So I haven't, I haven't played around with it enough, but in my opinion, for what I do, I can just use, like, I don't need to go lighter than a 16th for the most part, unless I'm going like a Ned rig. Um, could you use it with a bigger head to create a, like for a swim bait? Like the thing I'm thinking of using it is in like five feet of water up here in Surgeon Bay. If I want something with a big eye on it, like then I could use it um, where I would only be throwing like a 16th, even though I could put a pretty big eye on it. But otherwise, for the most part, I haven't played around with it. And I just don't see myself adding that into my tackle where I need more stuff. So, but no, it's a great idea. I mean, I definitely see the positives of it, but not enough for me to add it into my arsenal. Yeah. So here's another vote for the, the walleye end of things and, and jigs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'll tell you something. If you, if you talk to, uh, you know, whether it be on the fly tackle or other designers that make stuff for walleye stuff too, there's a lot of cool uh, things that the walleye guys do as well, you know? Yeah. And it's and not like, always the same as the bass guys. Right. And so no, definitely there's a lot to be learned. Um, from the stuff that they do and e- i mean even whether it whether it comes to j- jig head styles and things like that it's um you know it's it's just it's interesting to me to find out how you could take techniques from one targeted fish species and mm-hmm. then maybe use it uh in another way you know definitely what I mean? and, like like the walleye guys have had that northland whist wh- i think it's called a whistler jig they've had that blade on there on a jig head for 30 years I mean, that's nothing new yeah. for the walleye guys. I mean, that Northland Whistler jig has been around forever. That, um, that's it. The whist- the Northland Whistler It's Whistler or something like that. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, that's been around forever. So it's nothing new. It's and just if, if, if it's funny, you, you'll, you'll even see some of the pros. Some of the pros are still sponsored by freaking Northland. And, you oh, know, definitely. Who, Look who at the hell? Gussie. And which ones? All the Minnesota boys. Yeah. I shouldn't say all, but you go, but, they're, yeah. they're all sponsored by Northland. And you think they're not using that chick? You know what I mean? So no, definitely. Bass, what's up, buddy? Welcome. I saw you popped in. Um, and so and so the the test test family is saying, you know, 10 head cross on a fly rod in Raleigh's epic. It's so crazy, dude. There's so many cool things. And and the thing is, you've just got to be willing to um use things like here. Here, here's what I'm dumbfounded by tonight, and I'll be honest, right? And you guys know, like, I have an infatuation with smallmouth and northern smallmouth and all these different things. But at the end of the day, um, 
you know, like Max says stuff that scares me, right? He and I'm a, I'm going to tell the the line story. Oh yeah, you're good. Can I tell this? <laughs> yeah, right, definitely. So, so guys, I so I'm up in so I'm up fishing in, in Mille Lacs last week, right? And and I we're fishing, and I'm with a, a buddy of ours, Jim DeRosa. Okay, and he's he Jim DeRosa started the Mille Lacs Smallmouth Alliance up on Mille Lacs, so he's a well known dude, right? He's the guy that used to be in the Chicagoland area, ran a show uh, with Don DeGina for 30 plus years on the radio, right? And they, they were the original version of podcasts of fishing, right? They were they were some of the original dudes. But anyway, Jim's an old timer. He's up there now. And me and my buddy, uh, Jimmy, are sitting in the boat with, with uh, DeRosa. And we're fishing. And when he came to pick us up, all our other friends left already. And we're sitting there waiting. And the old timers, they don't get out early. They're like, you don't need to get out early. We're, our friends are already out. We're, we're at the house cleaning up the cabin, right? So we, we finally get out. And when we left, DeRosa t- says, hey, uh, you – you don't need to bring all those rods. I got 30 rods in the boat. I'm like, well, I brought my stuff and I, I got a hair jig on one of them and I'm using that rod. Like I go, I don't know what the hell you got set up. But anyway, I scale it down. I think I left the house with like three rods, which I'm like nervous Nelly now. Like I go, yeah, I don't want to keep cutting yeah. shit off <laughs> yeah. and switching it out. But I go, all right, he's a fishing guide up here. He's got to have something. I, I can use any rod. I, I'm no dummy, right? So we're fishing for a while and we're fishing transition areas from from sand on points we're fishing sand, transition areas they're pronounced points with sand transitioning like rock veins and we're like okay we're we're casting we're casting i go shit i need a paddle tail swim bait right now like i'm looking at the water i go this is what i want to throw we're in like eight to nine feet of water it's like this is where the fish are at i go i want a paddle tail swim bait and i don't have one so like i'm like oh shit what am i gonna cut off what I don't want to keep cutting stuff off. So I go, Jim, I said, do you have a rod? I said, with a swim bait on. He goes, yeah. He hands me a rod. I told Max this earlier. There's a quarter ounce head on this thing. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is too heavy. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, this is, we're like eight, nine feet of water. I go, a quarter ounce head. I don't need a quarter ounce head. I don't want that, right, is what I'm thinking. So whatever. There's a Kai Tech on the back end of it. And so I cast this thing out. And right away, I go, wow, what was that? I reel it in and I look, I'm looking at the reel. I cast again, guys, it was the smoothest. It was the smooth and it was not the reel. It was like a Revo or something like that. It was the smoothest casting line I have ever used in my entire life. Max just jumped out. He probably doesn't want me to tell this story. No, maybe he'll be back in. <laughs> so he, uh, Max will be back in. I'll, I'll get him back in areas. There we go. <laughs> I, I go, oh shit, he doesn't want me to tell me. Yeah, no, I just lost you there. So so I immediately, immediately, it is the smoothest casting line that I've ever used in my life, like so noticeable. And I'm like, what in God's name is this line? It's like bright, it, it, it it's a brighter colored line. That's all I'm gonna say. Whatever. <laughs> and I I think of Max because Max told me something about line for hair jigs, and I didn't listen to him. Cause I was afraid. This is the truth. I was afraid. And I, and this rod I was throwing was not the same, same size diameter. Max told me, but I'm telling you something, dude, it was, can I say it, Max? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. It was freaking Berkeley nanofill. And guys, I, I'm going to, I'm going to look you in the camera. <laughs> Berkeley, Berkeley doesn't think I'm cool enough to do anything and work with me. I'm just being honest, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you something. It was the smoothest casting line I've ever used in my entire life, in my entire life. So much so that it was so noticeably different. I sat there, my buddy who was in the boat with me that night must have ordered several hundred dollars worth of nano fill. It was that freaking good. Now, Max, tell me downfalls of it. Any, are there any times you don't want to use nano fill? Cause all I know is I'm going to put some nano fill on, on my hair jig <laughs> That's yeah, definitely. Sure. There's a ton of times when I don't use it. It's a very specific line. Okay, talk about. Tell me so the, about it. I want to know more. The three times I use it are pan fishing. I'll use the four pound. Um, yep. Okay. And then, like, I mean, you're throwing one sixty fourth or even more than that um, jig. So you need something that's going to cast. I will cast further. And like, I'm not. 
bragging. It is the it's the line. It's not me. It's it will cast further than anything else out there. I they even promise. say it. They they build a line. They're saying this yeah. line casts further than any line you can. Possibly I promise you, out of any other line out there, and there may be some of Japanese stuff that's better, but it is unfreaking real for what we are able to get here. Um, and there's downfalls real. to it. You can't snap set it. You will snap it. Even like the ten and twelve. I don't. You will if you snap set it without pulling reeling down on them first. You will right. snap it. Like it, it definitely okay. is not great for that. And the abrasion resistance is horrible. It's horrible in rocks. But that's why you just okay. use a longer leader. It is. So. It it is crazy to me. And I I've never I've never seen with such clarity the application for our rod. And and I I'll tell you this. And I'm I'm a guy that just I like to make I like to make hair jigs. I like to use them in different applications even than most people use them for because I don't get the fish up north as much. Mm-hmm. Um, but I will say this, in, in my opinion, I could see using nanofill and instead of running a short leader, I just put a top shot on mm-hmm. of, you know, whatever type of fluorocarbon leader that I'm going to use. And, you know, that's another thing. Like I'm even hesitant to go down uh, much past eight. Mm-hmm. What what type of leader are you using when you're. So well, I use the six pound Tatsu. Six um, pound Tatsu. Tatsu. Yeah. And I use probably a 25 foot leader on there. So it's definitely okay. a substantial leader. Um, just it's so clear. And if I'm fishing somewhere else, like I'm not going to name names, but somewhere else in Wisconsin, and it's not as pressured, um, I'll only use like a 12 foot leader because I'll cast farther. Like that leader right. definitely inhibits the casting distance. Um, but that nanofill, if you're using six pound nanofill, you will cast further than any other guy throwing a hair jig out. Yeah, there. I mean, because technically, once you if you're if you're top shotting it with like 20, 20 yards mm-hmm. or whatever, I mean, I don't know, 20 feet, I yeah. know, yards, feet, doesn't whatever. Mm-hmm. If that thing's back down on the spool, you had that whole first startup of all that mm-hmm. line having the first amount of line that has to go through the guides is 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 not, it's slowing it down more yep. than the nanofill will. So you kind of you you don't you don't want to go too long no right? you definitely like and there's times i mean definitely by the end of a day it'll probably be down to 15 feet and i'm casting further does it affect the fishing probably not but if i'm right. starting out a day especially like a tournament day i'm fishing with a 20 25 foot leader okay but um yeah enough. that nano fill is let's talk stupid um, Let's talk. Here's another question I want to talk about. So mm-hmm. I want to talk about um, because I think one of the, one of my exciting parts of having you on, Max, is mm-hmm. the fact that we get to talk about what I call the simple things sometimes, right? Yeah, definitely. And so, um, oh look at see, I found them. Look there. Hmm. Hold on, I just got to pull them out. Oh yeah, <laughs> the cool, the cool yeah, babe. It's, it's they were on the trip. All right, Ned's. Yep. Talk to me about weights and hook sizes for Neds and hooks. What do you, what do you like? I, I remember you saying earlier, I don't, whatever you can go in what, to whatever depth you want. Yeah, definitely. So, so I'm going to be honest. I do it molds is awesome. The applications I ha- they have helped me has helped me more than anything else I use fishing wise. I'm going to be completely honest. I like, I like to share. Um, but mm-hmm. so they're Midwest finesse. I do do not like in the lighter weights. I know um, what you're I know what you're gonna say. Go. The lead gets bent off right away. Like it yeah. the lead does not hold on it. The shape is not perfect in the lighter weights. Does it work? Absolutely. You're only gonna get a fish or two on it before that lead gets super loose on it because there's no grab on it. So for the lighter weights, which I do throw a lot, like the 120th. Okay. Z I I I use a Z Man. Yeah. They do I like their hooks? I think their hook is horrible. Um, but that one twentieth, it's just a, it's just a shape that holds on there better. Um, mm-hmm. but starting, I think it's the three thirty seconds. I start using um, the. Uh, it's, you go back to do it molds. I go back to the do it molds. Then I make this, and that that's plenty. I mean, I can catch a hundred on that, and it's completely fine. So listen, I don't mind. I don't mind having this conversation either. And so, I'll tell you one of the things that I do. Right. So mm-hmm. this is a three thirty second, and I've got. I've been this year's batch. I put. Um, I'll hold it this way for you. This batch this year, I put. Um, I wanted. To, I wanted to put a one out hook in there. Yep. 
and I put a one out victory, one hundred five okay. seven five in there, and I've been pretty happy with it, dude. I, really? I messed around, to, yeah. I messed around with it a little bit last year. I still feel like it's lighter wire, but okay. that's kind of like what I wanted. Yeah. Um, the biggest hook that I think people use in that Midwest finesse, if they're pouring their own, is the um, is the fifty three thirteen or fifty three eighteen. Mm-hmm. But I wanted to play around with the victories this year a little bit more because I used them. I experimented with them last year. And of all the victory hooks, frankly, the 105.75s, 105.75s are one, some of the lightest wire ones. They are. They're okay. Just, they, um, but I, one of the things that I did is I used to have the same problem that you're talking about with the 16, right? Or going down smaller. And I won't pour under 16. Mm-hmm. I just, I won't use below 16. They just don't. And one of the things that I realized that I had to do, I don't like making them. And I'll tell yeah. you why, because here, like, here's the 16th. Yep. Right. And the reason I don't like making, by the way, look at that hook guy. I take all my time on my hook oh, guy. Yeah. <laughs> but you, you know, you know why, guys? Because I'm making them for myself. By the way, that's going to be the, which one? The 332 guys, the 332 heat shrink, <laughs> two to one reduction. When I'm making my own stuff, I like to, I, I want it to be clean. So if you don't make your Ned rig, if you don't make, make your Ned jigs with clean eyes and you have to punch out the, the, the paint, mm-hmm. you're automatically losing the strength that you just added to that jig because it does, there's no lead on the weight. And at yeah. this smaller size, because it's a little more pancaked than the, like the Z-Man Ned, yeah. mm-hmm. that's why it does that. But what I do is I do double, <laughs> I do double dips. Okay. And I sometimes triple dip, but the only way to get past it is the tedious part of the smaller sizes of the Neds uh, on the Midwest finesse mold from doing mm-hmm. is that one you got to clip them off, which I'm not a big fan of doing. Yeah, I I technically every jig that I'm using I prefer to wiggle, but you okay. cannot wiggle. You can't no, you can't wiggle. You cannot that. wiggle no. a jig that has no um, lead on the. Um, on the eye and that would also go for the freestyle jig mold yes if you right. use the eighth or 16th ounce on the high, bigger sizes you can get away with it but if you try and you know rock it to get yeah, it off you're gonna loosen that leg you're gonna loosen it up so now then what happens is i i'll have a cockeyed head and i'm trying to dip it right and mm-hmm. and so i have to i have to i have to crimp crimp them what am i saying um what's it called gate shear them mm-hmm. And I'll cut them off, and then I have to sand them because my thing is this: if I'm painting a jig, there's plenty of jigs I won't sand the heads. If I'm making them for me, I just want I want to sand them. I you just want, you I want just it to be pretty. Yeah, that's that's how it is, right? Yeah. Even if it's a Ned, and so I want then I have to sand it down. And you got to take your time. Like I'll literally hold it like this, and I'm like gentle sanding mm-hmm. it. It's I I feel like I'm going into surgery, like a fine like a fine surgeon when I get down to that size. So much so. That I made these 16ths and my friends when I went to Malax asked me, they're like, Oh, do you have 16ths? You know, I told them the size that I had. And I they said, Can we have some? I said, No, absolutely not. No, no. It's a, yeah. a why I go, because it took me too long to make them. No, because definitely. to get to get them, you can get them right, but you it takes a lot of time. Definitely. And I do agree with you. 332nd and up, I'm I'm pretty much golden. For sure, eighth up. Yeah. So there's something here I wanted to talk about. Um yeah, so fishing the southeast said this, and I've done that before. Wrap some thread around the hook keeper. Yeah, and, and that'll and definitely yeah. work. I'm just lazy. I'm not gonna right. lie; like it's just extra work using it. So I'll just use it for right. the bigger sizes. Um, so this is what I want to talk about today. So this is the the football head. I, I think it's just their their whatever football head to it has, and then so I actually cut off a small part of the um, keeper there and tie in. A wire okay. keeper, because so yep. if you use the Z, if you use the Z Man stuff enough, you know it does not work on just like a lead keeper. Well, yes. like it will work if you heat up the lead and let it's it a pain in the it. ass. You don't want to no, have to do that. I don't want to do that. So what I do is I cut that off and put that wire keeper on there. So I do use a lot of football heads for my Nedrigs too. Um, is a lot of the stuff we fish is really snaggy and it just keeps you out of there a little bit better. And what um what talk to me about what will change hook wise for you when you're starting to use the um the football heads for the nothing I still use the size one five three one three 
And then if I'm bumping it up, if I'm throwing like a swim bait on there instead, I'll fish like a one out or a two out. Um, but I still like that smaller hook. I think our fish are so picky here that um, I think seeing that hook sometimes scares them. So I use still use like a size one. It's smaller than what a lot of people use, but it's just what I have confidence in. So that size There's... one is what I use for a lot of stuff which is small. I mean, it's definitely small, but it's what I use. So you're going to have to ask me once we get to winter mm -hmm. and, and, and say, and, find, and I'm going to have to keep you updated on what hooks I'm, I'm pouring on. Mm -hmm. I did make funny enough. I did make a comparison. Um, we'll get to Jim's question in one second, but I did make a comparison that the, a one odd, excuse me, do I have this right? Oh, ah, I don't want to say it cause I'm going to get it wrong, but basically it was a comparison between I. I'm gonna I'll double check and I'll have to talk about it in the next show. But I yeah. believe the Gami 604, a one at, was comparable to a size one, 5318 owner. I believe that. Mm -hmm. I, I'm gonna double check. I think I, it's longer, like it's a longer shank, but that hook gap is definitely probably similar. Is that yeah. five three one three has a much bigger gap. Yeah. So look at Brian, Brian Schmidt. Well, we'll get to Brian's in a second. So Jim, mm -hmm. Jim Tannelmayer says, what joining knot do you use with the Nanofil? Good There's question. only one joining knot. Go ahead. It's the FG. There's only one. Oh my one. God. The FT knot is people are starting to call it. Yes. Yeah. The F that. <laughs> yeah. There's only one and that's it. It's the only one I will throw. You know, I, I, I'm going to make a comment. So uh, I did a uni to uni when I was mm -hmm. up in Malax, and I freaking regretted it the whole entire time. And I'll tell you why. Because if the tag is hanging off this way on my line and it's going through my eyelets that way, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how close you get it. It's going to, you're going to hear that tink off and it mm -hmm. drives me crazy. And, 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 and if you're not doing an adjoining knot where the, uh, the tag end is going to be able to uh, be facing back down towards your reel. Mm -hmm. You're you're losing casting difference distance, and you know one you should know it just by hearing it. But I can't stand hearing that thing come out of my guides. Yeah, I don't it like drives it. drives me either. crazy. So and I don't I, like the FG knot. So I have a serious problem here. <laughs> so I tie like I'll tie it, and sometimes even the FG something doesn't sound right. I'll retie it because I don't like that sound so much. Um, but with that nano fill, it's so soft too. I actually leave a long tag because I don't want any movement, like no movement. So I'll leave a long tag and it does not affect it at all. The tag end does not affect it at all. Because of it, because how thin it is. Yeah, and with the, how thin. I mean, it's six pound test. I mean, it's literally like you can't even see it. It's so small. I mean, um, it's always, let's be honest, it's always the tag end of the fluorocarbon that causes a problem going through your eyes. Definitely. It's not yep. typically, it's not your braid. No, it's not the braid. But you know? like with, even with, I use like power pro, if I use 10 pound power pro, I don't like the sound of that. If I leave a long tag on that. Yeah. It, it makes, it saying. makes the sound. It does. And am I picky? Yeah. You know, I hate, I hate the sound of power pro going through guides period. Oh, it's horrible. But, but what I will tell you is I get real used to it when I put, 20 or 30 pound power pro on when i'm fishing the salt water <laughs> okay yeah and then then it doesn't matter because i feel like a whale's about to bite my mm -hmm. bite my line but anyway jim that was a good question no great all right question. so fishing the southeast says um you made a swim have you made a swim jig with a 3x 3x hook before like the california swim jig i have not and that doesn't mean that i won't um but i will tell you this how, how do i describe this and Jig Addict's in the room. If Jig Addict's still in the room, he'll be able to make a comment on this. But when you start when you start making things that start to fall into the walleye world a little bit, not that walleye are gonna fix 3X, but I'm using the hook the style that I that I personally like for saltwater bucktails is the ultra minnow um styled head, minnow styled head, call it whatever you will. Um, once you start getting up to these bigger size size jigs uh three quarter for sure but that's three quarters even big once you start getting up into an ounce or an ounce and a half you're talking five six seven eight odd hooks those things are ginormous and once you get that big i'm thinking they're, they i don't know if i'd call them three x but some of those hooks are like must add is real popular hook the gamagatsus is a real popular hook once you get up into the larger sizes um, but I have not used 3X. Um, 
some of the mustads, I don't know what they bill them as, but the mustad hooks for like with um for the flat eyes and stuff like that, or the the sixty degree eyelets, those things are freaking stout they're hooks, super heavy. Yeah. And there are guys um, so so fishing the southeast. Keep in mind what I'm about to say here, and who's saying it, right? I I can get by on all those larger sized mustad hooks in the typical one X's. A lot of them are two X's. I, I don't see the reason for me to use anything over two X. And I'll tell you why, because my comment is that I am not using line that would ever justify me having to go up to a higher um, hook. And what I mean by that. Guys, when I hear people talk about 80 pound braid and all this other stuff, like I just, it blows my mind. I, I, well, I'm not going to do it now, but one day we'll talk about like what pound I, I fish in, in the slop. And I just, I can't even do it right now because everyone's going to want to talk about it. But I'm not, you know, I'm not, guys, like I'm not a Euro angler fishing for carp here, right? <laughs> That's not with the smallest diameter line. But I, I'm just making the point that I think sometimes your hook diameter is relative to what what you're going to go to battle with, what your line diameter is going to be. And the saltwater guys are famous for that, right? The saltwater guys will also tell you, you should never get spooled by a fish, but you people get spooled by a fish, right? Guys that fish from the beach for like stripers, big stripers, uh, it, it, it just, it shouldn't happen. You should learn to use your tools and your set your drag and those different types of things. Let's be honest, us in the bass fishing world, there's only one reason to go up the heavier line and the and the beefier hooks. And that's because you're throwing in the stuff that looks like a, a, a six dead trees that decided to have a party and you are setting the hook and flinging them in. I I I'm gonna make one comment and I won't I won't say more than that. I'm also not the guy that flips a fish in the boat. And lets them flop all over the boat like mm. three quarters of the people I know. Hey, if that's what you do, so be it. I'm just telling you, I don't use heavy enough line to flip fishing in the boats all the time. And I know there's a technique to it, to swinging them in. And I'm not interested in maximizing my <laughs> my flex and my rod. But um, 3X, I know some of the, I, I bet you some of the Beast Coast jigs might have 3X jigs in there. They're using some BKK hooks and some of their stuff. And once you start talking about like hook lines like BKK, I mean, those are some seriously stout hooks. They're using, those are hook lines that manufacture stuff for like GT fishing and stuff like that. You know, it's the real deal. Um, so, but anyway, that's my answer to that, my man. We got, we'll, we'll, we should talk more about that because that's a good topic. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. You can make a shorter leader, Anthony. Yeah, you absolutely can make a shorter leader. There's no reason why you can't. Um, some yeah, guys it's all about water clarity too, like, and how right. pressured those fish are. I mean, do I think with me using the six pound nano fill, do they really see it? Absolutely not. It's all yeah. in my head. Right. But you could definitely you know, go to a five foot leader and I know guys around here that do it and they catch them as good as anybody. So, and you know, the other thing is too, if you're going to go to a shorter leader, and this is for anyone that's seeing this, whether you're in chat and or you watch on replay. There's obviously a lot more people to watch on replay, you know, when I see hundreds and hundreds of people watching the show or parts of it. The thing is, um, if you go to a shorter leader, the other part is that you're able to um, – you're not going to be running it through your guide. So now you could start changing up the knot that you're going to use. It's not – you you – there's a lot of strength, strong knots, right? And it'll go braid the leader. And I'll tell you what, guys, if you ever want to look up leader test strengths, if you look up the saltwater guys, Salt Strong is the name of the, the group of guys. Salt Strong, two brothers started that company. And they do a, a ton of videos. And they do a lot of comparison videos between a uni to uni knot, an Alberto knot, an FG knot, doing comparisons of the different strengths um, and if you're into looking at knots and seeing comparison tests done, I would definitely check out the, uh, the salt strong guys. Cause they have a lot of crazy cool stuff and you should see it. So Ken saying, I tie the FG knot for the day. If I need to retie the leader, I do the Alberto or something. Yeah, exactly. Same. That's what I hear, hear a lot of people say. Um, and Ken, you don't like power pro. So a lot of people will say that like, so even like, like I, I like power pro cause I don't use a ton of braid all the time. Right. 
But when I do the rods, I have power braid on, I have power pro on. And I will, I think I am going to switch in time to the super slick V2. Um, if I'm going to use power pro again, and I won't use the regular, uh, a lot of guys like the super slick V2, but I do want to play around with the nano fill a little bit because the time, frankly, oh, Max, how about this? Here's a question. Mm -hmm. What, what, um, what line are you using on drop shots? I'll use Cortland. Cortland. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cortland braid. Yeah. All right. Cortland five pound. Cortland five pound. Mm -hmm. What size leader? Six, eight? Nah, probably like 10 to 12. 10 to 12 is what I have on every rod pretty much. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's for, and that's for everything. That's not everything. just So if I'm throwing a tube, Ned rig, anything, um, unless it, if it's a swimming bait, I have 15 to 20. If it's drop shot, anything that's sitting there, um, 12 to 15. Leader. Mm hmm. I didn't, I'm shocked. I'm surprised. I feel like that's higher than I thought. I was oh, I thought you said say. length. That's length. Oh, no. no I, I thought, you said, I thought you said leader. No. Oh, no. no. I'm I'm like, Jesus, this guy's got five pound no, braid no, on no. and he's got a 12 pound leader. <laughs> no. So, no, I was mistaken. So, my main line is five pound on a lot of stuff. Okay. Um. So, my main line is a five pound Cortland braid. And then um, to like a drop shot, a lot of time I'll go six. Six okay, six pound tatsu. Um, I'll bump it up to eight or ten if I can, but a lot of time I don't want to, so I understand. Um, I'll even go down to four sometimes, so yeah. I mean, look at so here's look at so fishing the southeast, he'll use 80 pound and frog and swim baits. A lot of people will, mm -hmm. you know. Anthony Anthony says, I realized after retiring so many times that the shorty still did fine in the clear yeah. water. And do I think it's fine? Yeah, it's just in my head. But if you get that little confidence, I I think it's worth it. So, um, good comment by Ken right here because I know a lot of guys by me, uh, locally at least Chicagoland area that do like the Suffolk Eight Thirty Two or or even the the, the J Braid. You know. Yeah. So if you're gonna fish Suffolk, their new stuff. I can't, I don't think I have any here. Can't believe I don't. Whatever their new one is. What's their new one? Um. um uh, I don't, I don't remember here. It's not the 832. No, it's, it's new. Like this year, um, someone will come up with it. I'm sure. What's the newest one from grade from suffix. I mean, the, I, I know guys that are river rats. I mean, I'm talking like walleye river rats mm -hmm. that do like the suffix stuff. Um, whatever the yeah. new suffix is. Um, I don't know why I can't think of it, but that's been a big, it's the 131. Okay. That's unreal. That's some really good braid. Like I would put that up. It, like I debate whether going with that over Cortland for like m my other stuff. Really? Okay. So listen, let's talk about this a little bit more. And I know we're jig guys, but I, gosh, we got to well, talk about some part of it though. Right. We got to talk about some other stuff around mm -hmm. here. So, so Anthony's talking about the Cortland. I've heard you talk about Cortland. Mm -hmm. I know. I mean, tra so Travis, Travis yep. is with Cortland now. Um, I mean, it was enough for him to go and, and switch to start and to go with them. So he, mm -hmm. he obviously, it's not just all about sponsorship. Sometimes it's gotta be about mm -hmm. believing in the product. Right. And yeah. so now I'm hearing more and more guys talk about Cortland. And so like, so it's for me, I, now I kind of like, I thought that I thought that I'd be switching over to super slick v2 and now i hear more and more people talking about Cortland, and yeah I, I, that's now I, now i feel like one of these times i'm gonna have to try yeah i think Cortland is really uh, it amazed me um when i first started using it like power pro you take it out your first time it's losing its color it gets like white uh, one time yeah white and it frays and i'm not a fan of power pro um that uh and like I do use a lot of the um, SmackDown too. I mean, SmackDown's incredible line too, the Seagar SmackDown. But okay, I'm le I'm starting to get away from it because I do snap it. Like it'll randomly be like it'll just snap, and I'm like, what was that? And that court out of nowhere. Yeah, it just randomly snaps, and I, I'm like, I don't like that. Um, so I kind of start and get away from that. But that Cortland doesn't lose its color. It's super smooth. It's super tough. It is. It's incredible. So the reason the Cortland interests me is because I'm curious to see um, 
I, I'm curious to see what it does in the salt water, right? Yeah. So, like, and I'm not, like, the guys on here that, like, when the angler, Larry Hadley's on here, he's a fluke guy from down in Texas, and he fishes for everything. And you got mm-hmm. Jig Addict in here. He's a striper and everything else that swims on the West Coast out in Cali. Um, I, To me, it's just the way I am. Like, I I, I like finding compartments and of mm-hmm. things that I like and then using the range of it. So, yeah what that's why power pro that's why i stuck with power pro still to this day mm-hmm. for any freshwater stuff um and to be honest with you, and i've told people this before there's times i still use mono right yeah so it's just it is what it is i mean it's um but i i'm i'm really curious about the Cortland. like i'm i'm curious to try it and frankly one of the things i like about I, like i like to believe in the people that i'm using stuff for so like if i there there's things there's companies that i like their product and I, and I use it because I like it. But I also, I, I want to believe that the people that run the company in today's day and age aren't a bunch of slaps. Yep. And I can't say that about everyone across the board. And you won't get me to say more than that because right mm-hmm. now I'm only trying to compliment Cortland. But the times I've seen the guys from Cortland on talking about stuff, they just they just seem genuine and feel definitely. like, I, I don't mm-hmm. feel like I'm getting a sale job from them. No, definitely. You and know, like I noticed that too. Like, you don't, you're not going to see big sales. They're just people trying to make good line. Yeah, and, and they're like fishing too. Like they they like fishing, and they're just trying to make a good line. So it could be about you guys. Listen, I'm I'm telling you straight up. You guys know you guys know who I'm with. You know who I work with, and that's all I work with. I, there's no one else. But the Cortland people, like I I just I don't like BSers. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like I and I won't say the big company. I like there, there's a big company out there, and one day they told me. I, I was talking jigs with them. And it, when I say big company, it was, it's a big company. Mm-hmm. And they told me, and this is right before Jig Squad started. And they, they we were basically talking jigs, ironically enough. And um, and minus all the details, I, I'll never forget them telling me that um, that I asked, they go, so do you guys ever, you guys ever work with people? I said, I kind of told them some things I was working on and and I'm, I'm nobody, right? So I wasn't expecting, I'm not, I don't look for handouts from anybody. Mm-hmm. But funny enough, they told me, they're like, well, we really think you should fish more tournaments and get your name out there more. And I told them, I said, are you absolutely blind? Do you not realize the micro-influencer end of social media right now and what they're doing? I'm like, I'm not interested, bro. I said, you named, I said, I want you to name 12 people on your company staff that are tournament fishermen. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. And he, the guy laughed because he couldn't name, he couldn't even name 12 people. And they probably have about 50 50 plus that are like high profile names. And yes. I'm like, go scratch. I'm starting. No, jig squad. Definitely. No, <laughs> and, definitely. So, and so in came jig squad. Right. So, I mean, I don't know, dude, it's um, I let's see. on the fly brought up that sunline X plasma. I have not used it yet, but I've heard incredible things. And I know a couple guys around here that swear by it. So. All right. So here's a good question. So, um, all right, so Daniel T says, and I don't know which one it is. So with 13, I think he's talking sports, about the 131. Is that the 131? So like mm-hmm. conceptually, see now, so he's saying he goes with 13 cores, and this this is this practice from a practical standpoint, it makes sense. If there's 13 13 strands, let's call it cores, wherever mm-hmm. you want, doesn't it make sense that because there's 13 of them and more, they're smaller, mm-hmm. which means they're going to get cut easier. It is true, but just like in the movies, when the person's hanging off the cliff, <laughs> there's there's a few strands left that just aren't going to let it completely yeah. get sniped. You know what I mean? That, yeah, that's another thing with that too about. is we're not fishing 60-pound braid flipping for 10-pounders in the thickest stuff out there. I'm fishing five- and six-pound tests like – and I use my drag a ton. Like I'm not setting the hook super hard because the thing that snaps line is when you get that snap hook set, when you hit them on slack line, that's when you snap line. I'm not doing that. I reel into everything I do before I set the hook. So I don't snap often. It's if I snap something else went wrong, there was a nick in the line or something. So it's not like, I'm not worried about it snapping more because it's smaller. I don't set the hook like that. Like it's, I'm using light pound tests. So, but you also have to, I mean, you got to train yourself to fish like that. Right? Definitely. And I mean, so, it takes a lot. Like I have clients in the boat that come in that are from down South and they'll snap off 10 times before they 
actually get one sometimes. And I'm like, you just, you got to train yourself. It definitely takes some time. So. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's, it's crazy because, um, you know, it's just, it's interesting looking at all the different things because I, when it comes to line, it's so cool to hear everyone's different thoughts and strategies on it. And I, the only thing, the only thing I'll go back to and keep saying in all this, um, so here's another one, Mega Bass Dragon Call. Okay. Floral. Well, yeah, I haven't used that either. It's interesting looking at all the all the different things, right? So all I'm gonna say is the strength of your line, main line, leader, everything is relative to there's a lot of variables that come into play. So for us as jig makers, right? Or jig fans, what whether you're a maker or a fan, it's all relative to what you're using. So like I remember when we we're fishing the southeast was asked earlier about like, hey, are you making anything with three X hooks in it? And like one of the heavier hooks that I've ever made things in, I, I personally think is like, like well, one victory's got them now, but um, Eagle Claw, the one thirteens, the the tinned hooks, mm -hmm. they're phenomenal on like a sparky head fished mm -hmm. in the salt water. Yep. They're just they're beast hooks. Yeah, and and I don't think that they're three X in any capacity, but. When I start thinking that, like, um, it's just everything's relative to the line you're using, you know? And so um, there are times where I can use, like, a 12 or 15-pound. I still like models sometimes, man. I'm just well, being it's, honest. it's got its time and place. Like, top waters, I'll use it. They're, well, one top yes. water. If I'm using a popper, that's the only time I use it. But it's definitely got its time and place, so. Yeah, and, like, for me, um, it's just, it's crazy. Like, you, ha you always have to consider, like, how, what can what what might break and if you set your drag unless you're pulling something out of cover right mm -hmm. you should never break a fish off no no you should never break a fish off mm -hmm. if you if you're not pulling them out of cover and and that's when all these other variables come into play it's like do you set the hook too hard do you have mm -hmm. too light a line for your hook set sometimes people have to adjust the line they use because of how they set the hook yep you know i to learn to fish a hair jig I probably lost the first dozen that I made faster, faster yeah. than it took me to make them. You know, and you're gonna like, lose a lot of fish too. Oh if yeah, you're setting the hook like that. That I, I tell people like, if I hook one with a hair jig, and like I feel the bite. There's times when you don't feel the bite, but if I feel the bite, that fish is coming in the boat. <laughs> like I have, yeah. I don't know. I literally cannot think of one time I have ever lost one with a hair jig. Not one time if I feel the bite. So look like at fish in the southeast says I don't even own a spool of mono. <laughs> well, yeah. you should come over and see my eight pound uh XL trialing XL collection that I put on all my rods for my for fishing the ponds with me and the boys. <laughs> <laughs> so a trippy six just put one up there too. They uh the victory 60 degree. So they're 60 degree. I really like that. So what I use that for is the um the football. One of the footballs? No, it's the mullet one. Whatever the is oh, it the, the manic mullet. Manic mullet. So that's Dude, what that's I a throw. beast hook. That's it is. So what I do is I throw that on my air rigs and I flip them. I flip every one of them. Do you really? Mm -hmm. Do you you know who else uses that um that manic mullet? I'll tell you something that um and I don't know what hooks he's putting in there, but um Larry Hadley, the angler, he makes he uses the manic mullet and he makes like a shrimp. He calls it like a oh, shrimp yeah. jig or something. Mm -hmm. And just they're phenomenal ties, but he he likes that manic mullet. I I actually like I I love the manic mullet because it's got such a beef stick hook on it. Yeah. I just don't um I just don't have a uh, application where I'm using it. Yeah. No, and I like yeah. I like that I can have a big eye on it. So I yeah I use that for an a rig. Um, and I I can flip them on it because that sixty degree. I'm really impressed with that victory sixty degree. Um. It's it's a really good hook. It's a very it's a very stout hook. So like when you start talking about those larger, um, let's just I, we'll, we'll I'll generically call it like flipping jigs, right? Mm -hmm. If you consider what a flipping jig is, uh, whether that's a sparky head, maybe the manic mullet. The manic mullet they build more as a swim jig head because it's yep. got like a cone yep. cone head a little bit. I I think it, you could use it in multiple applications. The saltwater guys love it too, but um. I think like look what Brian Schmidt is saying right here. So listen here, let me let me tell everyone, and some of you know this already. So Brian Schmidt was one of the first couple of guys I had on the show, right? So Brian Schmidt is a world class 
world-class, world-renowned fly tire. And Brian Schmidt has several of some of the, of the most famous flies ever made, right? And the unique thing about Brian Schmidt is he makes these fantastical looking Ned rigs with real sparse material, a couple strands of the Ned dread, and he's there on tackle warehouse. But the thing is, Brian Schmidt, you want to talk about small line size and everything else. Brian Schmidt used to be, I, I'm Brian, I'm going to murder this, right? But he used to work for Umqua, which was the feather merchants or the, the fly tying company that brought in all the flies and said, all the people in the country, we're going to buy from you. We're going to buy from you. We're going to buy from you. That was Brian Schmidt. And then they would take those and market it to all the fly shops in the United States around the world. And, and so he, he comes from the fly world. Right. And then he, and now he's, he's a bass head, right? Maybe he always was a bass head, but mm -hmm. it's just, it's crazy because a comment like this is too many people lose the importance of synergy of yeah. line size in hook type. And I mean, when, when in God's name have we look at it? And since Jig Squad has been around, we haven't talked about it on here. Mm -hmm. we no, haven't. I think it's super important to talk about because we, we use the tackle, but we don't talk about what we use to fish that tackle. So like you, you heard me take my shot and guys, listen, I, I love you all, dude. I just, I'm a straight shooter. I speak my mind, but you heard my comment about the boat flippers. I I don't, I couldn't flip a fish in a boat if, unless it was under 15 inches <laughs> and I, that's not a hundred percent true, but you get the general gist, you know, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, I feel that we are, we, we way overdo it in terms of line size and, um, and, and a lot, I, I don't know what else to say. And you know, the other thing is when you've got absolutely no resistance by using braid and you'll have resistance with a fluorocarbon leader, right? Mm -hmm. But when you limit the amount of resistance that you, or excuse me, the stretch that you have in your line and what we're using, which is the game right now. That's the fishing game. Mm -hmm. Everything changes, right? And so I, I don't know. Like I, I I learned to fish with mono. I still fish with mono. I'm an old school river rat. I still like mono in a river. Even my buddies have switched over, but I still like mono, right? For mm -hmm. the type of stuff I do. And, um, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's so interesting hearing the different thoughts and stuff because all of it can work depending on how you tweak what you do. Right, yeah, Matt? definitely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, it's all what you feel comfortable with. Like I know guys that still throw, throw straight fluorocarbon out on the bay. Do I think it's crazy? Yeah, but it works for them. So, um, when, when I started drop shotting, I started drop shotting with straight fluorocarbon. I had the whole spool. The whole thing was spooled up with fluoro. Well, That's I know I some use. guys that do. I just, it's, it's so not manageable for me, like, and guiding too, like trying right. to have clients use fluorocarbon is a joke. Like, it's just not going to happen. So it, it's, it's, that's a very good comment. Like it's hard, you know, things have to be, you have to be able to use them and anything mm -hmm. that's difficult, you can overcome and manage. But like, if you're guiding, like I can't, can't even imagine the problems you run into. No. no, like how many wind knots even I get, but like fluorocarbon would be so much worse with like line twists and it's just, it's not, uh, bolt flip on the trick. Yeah. So the only thing I bolt flip a fish with is an A rig. I think the faster you get that fish in the boat, the better. So like last fall, I bolt flipped a six five, and like I didn't know it was that big, but I'm like shit. I just bolt flipped a six five. I probably shouldn't have done that, but I just think getting them in the boat faster is better. So yeah, you know what? It it is true, right? And so I I you you're right. So. The, 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 the one thing I'll say is like, even though once in a while you hear me throw an opinion out there, I, I don't care what you do. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. I, however you fish, like I, I could tease Chris McCloskey Gators adventures. I could tell him, I'm like, well, I see your pictures with freaking straw hanging all over your fish. You know, I tell my buddy that all the time. Mm -hmm. I tell him, I go, you another one, you dragged up the bank again. <laughs> I, I could care less, dude. If you, whatever people do. I mean, you know, there's, there's guys that are going to talk about fish care and everything else. And you use two, I, you know what guys, here's the deal. Not one of us is better than the next guy. And that's the, that's, the, that's the biggest thing. And, you know, you got to be willing to try different things. Like I, I'll, here, I'll, I'll show you here. Here's a little stick myself out there a little bit here. Here's a Mike Murphy. Like, so you guys all saw, I posted the, um, I had two different reactions to all the little spinner head jigs that I made. Mm -hmm. Some people said. I don't like it that far back from the head. 
Mm-hmm. You know how I go. Yeah. I said, well, listen, I said, I purposely made them that way so I can use smaller baits so I could still get some body action yep. outside the round bend of the hook. Besides that, I could use cup washers to get it more condensed and closer mm-hmm. up. I said, but I designed those for a very specific reason. But here's something that drives me crazy. I didn't show this earlier. This will be a good. Uh, let me get a good one that will show it. This drives me crazy, but it doesn't matter. This is this is my box that I showed you where I had green pumpkin, chartreuse, and mm-hmm. white. Three different sizes, 16th, 8th, and 3 sixteenths, right? Let's see if we can see this on this head. Ah, of course, you're not going to be able to see. Hold on. You're not going to be able to see here. Oh, let me turn it. If you, it's, nah, you can't see it. So I needed to use the gate shears to clip this head on these jigs, right? Mm-hmm. And they're kind of, these look cockeyed. It looks like there's extra pain on them because I double dipped them, right? Mm-hmm. But the thing is, I, these are the ugliest looking jigs that I've ever made. <laughs> uh, but they catch fish though. I know. And, yeah. and I laugh because, like, look at this one right here. This one, this one doesn't even have a stupid wire keeper on it. I should have showed one that had, these are all my wire keeper. I just showed one that didn't have a wire mm-hmm. keeper on. How'd that one get in there? Well, you glue it. It's fine though. Like I'll yeah. actually fish them without wire keepers because it'll ruin. Like if you throw it you on a kayak, yep. you just glue it because that yeah. wire keeper is almost worse sometimes. It is, man. I had to cut these off, right? In the gate shears that I used, um, it clipped too much of the concaveness of mm-hmm. the um of the ball head. So it it's got like the slightest little flat part okay. on the front okay. end. And I I purposely made these for like swim jigs uh for grubs. On like river systems, right? Yep. I specifically made them for grubs. And I just said to myself, I, go, I, I really don't care. And I don't even care showing them to people. It's like I made a mistake with the shears I was using to cut, which I don't like doing, as I've already said. But mm-hmm. because there's no lead on the hook, like you have to make adjustments. I, the only reason I bring this up is because if your shit is not perfect, then who cares? Yeah. You no, know? If, if it makes you happy, like it works definitely. And like, with the jig, there's definitely a learning curve to making your own stuff. I mean, like, it takes a long time to dial it in. And, like, the one thing I think I have dialed in is a hair jig. That's the one thing I have confidence yeah. in more than any other bait I own. Like, that's just what I throw. I mean, this is just one of my hair jig boxes. and um, It's so beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I'll show you a little bit. I don't like to show all the colors. All but, right. Come on. Let's make you big. Yeah. Hold on. So one thing we're talking about line, not just our hair jigs and our jigs. Um, that's a great box, by the way, from Amazon. It Aventic. is from Amazon. So that's is what it I was going to bring up. Hmm? Is that the name of it? Yeah, Aventic or something I like love that. these yeah. boxes. No, they make a great box. So there's two boxes you can use for hair jigs. There's the one, the Gamagatsu, they make a really nice one. That blue I, one, that's a very nice box. Or this you, one. That's the only you can two. get this a little cheaper. Yeah. So this, this is my hair jig collection. Screenshot, screenshot. That's one of them. Yeah, I know. You can put that away now. <laughs> but I see that red wine looking one you got going mm-hmm. in there. <laughs> no, that's very specific, but um, it does work. So that's yeah, awesome. That's the one bait I have like confidence in. Like and like I'll show you some of them. Like I these are the ones I care. I I take so long to tie these. Like so long to tie it like everything is perfect on them i'll even put them in the water if it doesn't swim perfectly i'll throw yeah. it over the side of the boat like this garbage even though i take really? so long it looks perfect right now if it's not perfect out in the water it it just i don't have confidence in it so all right let me let me ask this will this will be the last leg of our our mm-hmm. show because this is a good topic for us right mm-hmm. all right so hair jigs material wise you do you prefer marabou over craft fur because there's times mm-hmm. People like craft fur. Yeah, it, it definitely has its place, mm-hmm. um, but marabou for the most part. What well, I'll tell you something. The last batch I made up, I went mm-hmm. to go start making some craft fur ones, and I was going to make like a light color, mm-hmm. and I, I made like one, and I go, I'm freaking done. I said, <laughs> I don't want to make these yeah. because I got so annoyed cutting the craft fur off of the patches and and brushing out that stuff yeah under fur i go dude i said i, I said i have to make i said I, i'm gonna use I, I almost felt like i'm going through the patch i go my god to get this how i wanted a, a good person who's on i think is online right now told me a little tip to help with profile bulk and profile that i did i did actually 
uh, use. And so, but the thing is, um, I, I I can't stand it. I go, I got this chunk out. I go, man, yeah. all right, here we go. Let's clean it out. Well, maybe I over clean it out. <laughs> mm-hmm. But by the time I get done, I go, look at this little shit piece of yeah. hair. I said, I, I, I almost didn't even want to wrap it. I almost wanted to set it down and go do another piece so I could use those two together to wrap. But I was so annoyed because I had such a rhythm going down with the hair from the marabou. I just yeah, and like it's definitely I, I don't like tying it either. The biggest reason I do not like craft fur, and it's in my head, I know it is. Um, you know how you get your marabou, you get your nice ends, like everything looks good, like it's pointy ends, everything fits right. You don't have to cut it like flat, like it's not cut. Yeah. To get craft fur to the length I like it, you have to cut it flat. You have to. And I just, I don't like that about it. Like, I don't want that cut. I want it to be like a tapered end. And um, sure that you can fish them longer. I just, with how pressured our fish are, you're going to miss them. <laughs> hey, Brian's busting your balls, buddy. <laughs> Little light. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. I'm not showing me other couple boxes. Those are, those are secret. That's good though. That I... He he made a comment because like I'm it's like amateur hour when I'm tying mm-hmm. hair jigs right because I I also was the, was blowing through using two ten and Bry's the one that got me using the six odd mm-hmm. and um I broke the damn thread so many freaking times yeah I, I made so many jigs that had um that had a little piece of hair or a little piece of uh at the end and I tried wrapping over and I thought I had it covered and wrapped up to to mm-hmm. start tying again and I I. I kept getting reminded there was a little piece of <laughs> thread hanging out when oh, I go yeah. to code it at the end. I go, God, I can't show these to the people I hang with. They're going to ah, laugh they me. don't care though. And, and you know what? They, they it, I will say this though, for anyone out there that if you're not tying and you want to tie, just start, you have mm-hmm. to start. And it's going to be horrible everything. to start. I'm going to tell it. It, it yeah. really is like, they are going to look, Hard. you're going to look at them. You're going to be like, what is this? But, You'll get to the point where you'll be happy with them. I can't, I, I've come a long way and I'm nowhere close to being where um, I want to be. Right. Mm-hmm. Like I, I, I started, I, I did, I did a much better job on this batch of hair jigs. Like I feel, I, I feel like I have a little bit of practicality that I'm starting mm-hmm. to employ to it a little bit more. And I just like anything else. I don't, um, I just don't, um, I'm not, I, I'm not excited about making anything with silicone right now. Like I just want to tie some things. I just want to yeah. practice. No, and, definitely. Yeah, so like, yeah. And it depends what materials too. Like I would not, if I'm starting with someone new, don't start with bucktail. I mean, bucktail no, definitely dude, bucktail is a learning ruined me. curve. Yeah. Like bucktail that, ruined me. Yeah. People, people would tease me cause I'd have thread heads that were just like, you know. Yeah. Super long. And it takes a while. So like here I'll show it's okay. a couple bucktails here. I, I have a buddy, um, like I said, I, there are things I say and people have to consider who's saying it. Um, like, like I have buddies that are like my walleye friends, they do things differently. Right. And then like when I tie, when I try messing around with bucktail, I'm thinking of things for like off the beach or around the docks, mm-hmm. you know, on vacation and stuff like that. Like, I don't, I don't have enough chance. Like I, a good group of friends of mine are big walleye guys and they fish how will I describe it? Northern Illinois rivers for okay. walleye. And I'm talking, they, 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 they are big fish hunters and they throw hair all winter long. Mm-hmm. And they, they just make some great jigs that don't always match up with what everyone thinks for a, a bucktail jig. Yeah. But they're and like on the fly. They make some incredible with the, the flathead style. I mean, they're walleye hair jigs are unreal. Um, yeah. Listen, anyone in chat, if you're looking to ever get, um, jigs and stuff like that for the great lakes region or you're looking for somebody to buy from on the fly tackle get a hold of them on um instagram they just make some phenomenal stuff i've been you know i'm just going to talk smack about them right now too because i've been trying to get uh ben to come on uh and he and he, and he says he wants his, the sun coming on too and i want to get these guys on to kind of at least give us a little bit of knowledge and education and i'm going to get them on sooner or later right boys <laughs> but anyway go ahead show what you're yeah, showing so this back. is like this is the bucktail so and like i that's not even a great one for me like that i i think there's th- too much thread showing on that one does it matter no but um mm-hmm. like i fish i mean this is the bucktail i'll use randomly for um just fishing just like i would a marabou but um it's pretty small see that's but the size of that fun, funny enough max 
there are two other people that have been on here. And if anyone wants to go back and reference, you guys can go see. But uh, well, one one maybe on down the line is Hollywood Hair Jigs. Mm -hmm. um, Hartman, I think Hartman's last name. Hollywood Hair Jigs from the East Coast. And then the other thing is CT Fish, CT Fish Nerd, uh, Josh Rayner was on here. And he throws uh, bucktails that size a lot for bass. And yeah. not like he he guides for stripers, but he also throws bucktails that size. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I love that size. You know, you know who's another one, Max, who was making stuff like that? Evan Luda from Omerta, mm -hmm. who we had on, he was making some smaller bucktails that size. And and if you get a response like that from from Brian Schmidt, you're always doing good. <laughs> no, I appreciate that. If it's coming from him, I I guess it's not too bad. So that's I awesome. um yeah, I mean, listen, I, I'll tell you, I'm I'm happy we covered a lot of different things tonight, bud. I mean, mm -hmm. there's no, it was awesome. Um, yeah, I I, I I obviously want to get you on again. I mm -hmm. think um, I think we have some things. Um, I I can't. I, I probably I don't think we could say anything about this, but there'll be some things coming up. Mm -hmm. Uh, there'll be things come coming up. Uh, video wise, um, on social media that you'll see that. Max and I will be involved with in the coming months mm -hmm. and um, I'll leave it at that. I'm excited but, about, yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, and there's more we can talk up. about too. Um, like I did, we didn't even get to this tonight, like small football heads for dragon and oh yeah, I so believe, much we can get to. So but when we get to the fall, let's do it again. Yeah, definitely. And we'll do, um, we'll do some more chatting and um, yeah, Max, I, you know, you know what I think of you, I appreciate you a ton. Um, you have a wealth of knowledge and, Every time I hear you say something, it always reminds me that I have to do something a little bit different and better. And because uh, I want to sure be better. I mean, I mean, just learn it from everybody. You got to pick up little stuff from everybody. Like it's yeah, never stop learning. Yeah. And and everything can work. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes they, they have different applications. But, um, you know, uh, I appreciate you for all the things that you do. And I'm hopeful to get you on again. Definitely. Well, thank you for having me on. I really appreciate it. And uh, hopefully I can get on again. Yeah. Here's a, here's a little ending note from uh, the Tesh family on the flight tackle. If you want to see a cool video, check out Kansas angling on YouTube. I did see Watch. he was using their baits. That's awesome. Yeah. So check it out folks. Listen, everyone, whether you're, you know, obviously everyone in chat, I appreciate you as always. Um, I told you the stickers are here. So um, just message me. Everyone likes the surrender to jigs one, right? Um, and then of course the little one. So if you guys are if you if you want stickers, you need to slap them somewhere. Uh, I'll say what I I'm reminding myself to say. Make sure you, you uh, hit the thumbs up and um, subscribe. So the goal is to keep pushing on, and we're gonna keep doing it our own way and uh, my own way and. Uh, <laughs> With a, and, and we get to talk about a lot of things that we love, uh, do it molds being one of them. We like to make our own jigs, max pours. Um, and if you don't pour, no big deal. <laughs> you yeah. you just listen to us talk about the different sty style of jigs out there, and there's a lot of people that will help you. If you ever have questions, you can find Max again. Um, let me throw it up real quick, and it's in the link down below. Max is on Instagram at mbangling1. And if you're ever up in the Door County Peninsula region and you're looking for a guide, Max is your guy. He's awesome. You've heard him talk tonight. You ever have any questions, just let us know. But that's it. Max, you got anything else before we get out no, of here? No, definitely just want to thank everyone else, too, uh, for coming on. And if you ever have any questions, like I get messaged pretty often. I really appreciate the questions. Like I just love sharing. I learned a lot from other people. So if you ever have any questions, just message me on Instagram, and um, I'm, I'm, I'll answer anything. So happy to be on. All right, you guys, we're out of here. Uh, Max, stay on. I'm going to end this. And um, mm -hmm. you guys, I appreciate you a ton. I'll, oh, next show, I'm super excited because uh, Mr. Danielson from Angler Assets, who makes one of the best spinner baits in the entire game, is going to be on, on the show. And he also makes a mean jig. So obviously we're going to talk about jigs, but um, I'm excited to have him on. He's a fellow guy. He does a lot of stuff with the youth, youth bass fishing in Illinois, uh, which is my home home state. And I'm excited to have him on. And so that'll be coming up in a couple of weeks again. I'll throw the date out real quick so you guys have it. So that, that's coming up in the 23rd. And then some other very, very cool um, uh, guests coming on in July as well. So more to come. Peace, folks. We are out of here. Thank you for uh, supporting Jig Squad. And um, we're out.